Hello everyone, welcome to the shed. My name is Lonnie. Hey, I'm Candace, welcome. Um, we are a full-time reselling husband and wife team on eBay. And we thought today we would go over mistakes commonly made by new resellers. I've been reselling on eBay for nine years now. And Candace joined me uh, a couple of years ago. A little over two years ago, I joined and um, I quit my job and I came to work here in the shed. Yeah. And I have made a lot of the mistakes that are on this list today. So I feel, uh, I feel like I am qualified to talk about them. Uh, we've sold over 30,000 items on eBay. We have over 12,000 feedback. Um, so we have a good bit of experience and we've noticed we also have a Facebook group that is linked down below. Great place to ask questions if you are new and you need help. Um, but we have seen and we've also experienced ourselves a lot of these newbie mistakes that you make when you first start selling on eBay. So we we tried to compile a list of the top 10 things that we could think of. Okay, so the first um, pointer we have is buying too much equipment too soon. Yes, I've seen a lot of people that they're making like five sales a week and they're like, I need to get a thermal printer. I need to get this. I need to get that. I need to do this. I need to do that. Usually, it's that's not the case. Yeah, you, you're. it's better to, at the beginning, reinvest that money into more inventory. If you have an inkjet printer, that'll suffice for now until you can afford that thermal printer. If you have a cell phone, you can take your pictures with that instead of buying a right. fancy camera. Right, we have this $500 camera here and we love it. It does a great job, but you know what? We could sell, it. it's probably made us no more money because we could have taken the same photos with a cell phone. Yep. Nobody would have cared. This fancy light box, you don't need that in the beginning. As long as you have a clean backdrop, don't set your product up on your kitchen counter with a bag of potato chips. <laughs> you want a clean backdrop. If you need better lighting, take take a little table outside and do it outside. Or or make a you can get like poster board yeah. from the from the dollar store. Set it up. Uh, get a couple of lamps. Aim it at it. Yeah. All right. And then as time goes, start uh, adding to your equipment. It, it, and you'll start you'll start to as you get experience you'll start to get a feel for man my photos are pretty good but i want to level up on these like you'll start to mm -hmm. and then you you'll you'll think about it and you'll ask ask opinions on different lighting options and things like that and then you purchase it based on experience don't try and okay i'm going to be an ebay reseller what all do i need and then just buy it all from the start right. because you're going to end up with a bunch of stuff you don't use or a bunch of stuff that isn't really that great or doesn't add that much to your bottom line and then you won't have the funds to buy more inventory that's right yeah. use what you already have as much as possible when you're first starting all right number two failing to thoroughly inspect items before buying them so condition is very important and that doesn't mean that everything you buy has to be like new we'll get into that later as far as whenever you're listing but it is very important for you to inspect the condition of your items when you're buying them um, for example if you're buying um, things electronics if you can open that battery compartment do it there's so many times that um, battery compartments the batteries just leak in there and it corrodes everything and there's no saving it yeah it can kill it mm -hmm. um, clothing make sure you look over every inch of that clothing if they're for stains or holes or little tears um what else well uh sometimes i can't tell you how many times that i've bought something say at a garage sale or a thrift store and i'm like oh look it's new in the package and then i get it home and i look a little closer and I discover oh it's not new it's been repackaged doesn't mean it's it's no good it but it does mean you can't sell it as a new item so yeah, uh, Re repackage or some people take very, they keep their original boxes and take really good care of them for right. it. it looks new, yep. but inside the product is not new. So just thorough inspection whenever you are buying things. And if you are dealing with clothing, I could tell you if you're in poor light at a garage sale or a thrift store, bring, if you can get it out to better light before you pay, because I can't tell you how many times we've really looked something over. Yeah. and we get it back here under these nice bright white lights 
and we can see the stains we couldn't see before yeah like so like estate sale dark houses yeah so be very vigilant with your inspection okay so you've got your item you're ready to list it one thing before you list something is knowing how you're going to ship this item before you list it yep and i can't tell you how many times i've seen like in facebook groups or even on youtube somebody will buy say um a, a big fragile lamp with a big lamp shade on it and they'll sell it for a hundred dollars free shipping right yeah and next thing you know they're in the old facebook group showing us a picture of this lamp and they're like how do y'all recommend i ship this and the first thing i'm thinking is why are you asking about that after you sold it right like that is the wrong time especially when you're new mm -hmm. you need to be selling for the most part things that are easy to ship small things not fragile things maybe clothing shoes things that can go into small boxes that aren't complex to pack because the packing and shipping is one of the harder parts of reselling yeah bottom line when you buy something be confident that you are going to know how to pack it and be able to do it well or figure it out before you list it because yeah. when you, you go to list you need to have a really good idea of how big that box is going to be and how much it is going to weigh before you list that item otherwise you're going to hose yourself on shipping costs number four skimping on packaging um, when you're starting out, you're not going to have a ton to invest in packaging supplies. You will need tape, of course, and some boxes. It's okay to recycle boxes. Just make sure they're clean. You don't want to use something like a cereal box. Um, you you want to make sure your box is clean. You don't want water stains on it because then they're going to think that their package may have gotten wet. Um, just clean packages and packing supplies. And don't use like old nasty looking newspaper or just throw a bunch of old crumpled up Walmart bags in there to pad with. Right. That just looks bad. It does. You know, does. and then also, if you have something that collectible, uh, and if you put it in a bubble mailer, there's a chance it's gonna get crushed or bent, really good chance, uh, your customer's not gonna be happy. Inexperienced shippers do this kind of thing very often yes and the way i look at the way i look at packing and we spend a lot of on packing supplies mm -hmm. we buy a ton of bubble wrap we buy tape we buy paper we buy boxes and boxes and we get free boxes and it's a mess over here but y'all can see all this stuff we buy a ton of this stuff because when you're packing when you're sh when you're shipping that item to your customer the idea is not only to get that item to your customer as they bought it. They When they take it out of that package, it should look just like it did on that eBay listing that you yes. made, right? Yes. The main reason we pack the way we pack is because we want to secure our bag. Secure the bag, I should say. Yeah. Right? Like, you made the money. Now you have to do everything you can to defend that money from getting taken from you. Because if you do a bad job on packing, if you're lazy about it, or you use substandard materials to pack with and that thing gets damaged, you're gonna pay for it. Okay, this is an easy one, and I've seen this a bunch too. Mm -hmm. And I imagine some of you that are have just started on eBay are already doing this too. Number five, buying postage at the post office. It's always a bad deal, y'all. Uh, just about all forms of postage through USPS and through UPS, same thing goes. FedEx, like UPS, the UPS store, uh, these FedEx office places, any of these pack and ship places, right? If you're buying postage there, and I see it, whenever I bring packages to UPS store just for drop off, I hear the quotes these people are getting and they're paying double what I'm paying at home mm -hmm. from my own computer using my own postage and it takes me less time and it's it's more convenient and then I'm just dropping the package off even at USPS like you go to the post office it's going to take you to buy your postage it's going to take you way more time and you are going to get hosed like you're going to be paying 30 30 40 percent more than someone that just buys their postage directly from eBay 
So buy your postage online. If you don't have a printer of some sort, get one. Or if you have to, they do have that. Um, you can buy the, the barcode thing. You can bring your phone to the, the yep. counter and they can print the label for you at the post office. Yep. However, I would, I would recommend get a printer, get a computer, print your postage. It's going to save you a bundle. And that, like, I was the talking printer about. printer will pay for itself. Yeah, I was talking about equipment earlier. If you don't have a basic computer and printer, yeah. you do have to have that. Yeah. Buy your own postage. Number six is exaggerating or failing to disclose the condition of your item. That could be in the description of your listing or even in your photos. Um, I've, I've seen instances where there's been photos where they kind of hid the flaw. They didn't show that in their pictures. Be upfront about your item because all it's going to do is result in a return if, you, if you're not honest. Re reveal any flaws in your description if it's little scuffs or minor 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 stuff just make sure you get good pictures that show it yep and don't like f for exaggeration if you find yourself often saying awesome excellent mint <laughs> like and, new like new if you're doing that a lot yeah you're an exaggerator yeah. i hate to tell you you're exaggerating. We maybe use something like that once a year on, an, on our, our items. Here. I don't even like using it. Yeah. Our perfect condition. It yeah. doesn't get you any more money. No. It doesn't it's get still you. still a used item. It's a used item. Yeah. Right. And yeah, and it, 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 if something, you see this on Facebook a lot too. Somebody will say something's brand new and they don't even have the box. Yeah. And it's being used. It's used once, brand new. There is no such thing as brand new or new that was used once. I was comping something earlier and they said brand new and it was missing a bunch of paint off of it. Right. So yeah, just be honest and up and forthcoming about the condition and it'll save you a lot of headache. It will. It will. It, there, it, it's not going to do you any good to deceive your buyer and then they get the item. It's always going to come back to you. So save, your, save yourself some grief and some trouble. And I know you think you can explain your way into more money, but you can't. Let the, for the most part, your photos should tell the story more than your words. Yep. Which means if you're putting, you know, part of that, like not exaggerating and, you know, or not disclosing condition, you can put up to 24 photos on eBay now. Use them. Like for instance, we're we're listing nutcrackers. These are fairly high end nutcrackers. Average, how many photos do you think you're average averaging per nutcracker? Twenty to twenty four, because I do full body shot and especially the front of the the nutcracker, I go in for close ups, head, torso, legs. Yep, and, and then, then you then turn I do it side. Yep. I I'll do head, torso, legs. I do that on all four sides. That's only sixteen. That's only twelve photos, right yeah, there. Yeah, and then you show the bottom, right? Yes. Like there, there show you show all your angles. You and should then, show every angle. And then you you don't have anything to defend. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Number seven, not organizing your inventory from day one, and I could talk about this one because I did it when I first started. Uh, I was doing this out of a small spare bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I just had a few shelves and I had a closet and I had a had different shelving and stuff and and I would list something and put it on the shelf and when it sold I, I had like what you knew I had, where it was. had a couple hundred things and yep. like if you told me one of those things I'd be like, Oh, that's over here behind the yeah. Yep. Oh, it's behind this other thing. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. And then that works that works great and you're like these people with their inventory systems, that's silly. I know where everything is. I don't need that. But then next thing you know, you've got 200 items. You've got 300 items. You've got 400 items. And orders come in. And you're not, next thing you know, you're, you're getting 10 orders a day. And order comes in for something, right? And you're like, I know where that is, I think. And then you go, it's not there. It's not there. And you swear it was. You end up canceling. You get a defect in your account. One thing that can really kill an eBay account, too many out of stock defects. That is that is horrible. I was in and out of top rated seller when I first started 
because I did not have an inventory system. And when I say inventory system, it is not hard to do. We simply have our shelves numbered and we, we put that on our listing where that location is. And so when, when you're pulling orders, bam, you can go right to it. It doesn't waste your time. All right, quick example. I have this, Candace just listed this a little while ago. You can see we were talking about how many photos we use. We have 19 photos of this one Tchaikovsky Nutcracker. And you see the title here. And then the next thing we do after photos and title, custom label SKU, you see where it says 10C? Uh, we have our shelves in numerical order. Coming down this right wall here, it goes seven, eight, nine. That shelf 10 right here, shelf 11 right here. So we know it's on 10. 10A, 10B, 10C, whenever we go to pull it, he's gonna be sitting right here on 10C, just like it says in the listing. And it doesn't, I'm telling y'all, it doesn't seem like it when you first start, but the sooner you implement some type of inventory system, the better, because everyone loses things and everyone makes mistakes with that, trust me. All right, number eight is failing to list consistently. Now you may be part-time or you may be trying to do this full-time. What you need to do is think in your mind how much time you wanna invest in this business and do it consistently. That could be listing two things a day. That could be listing 20 things a day. That could be listing for two hours a day. That could be listing for eight hours a day. Just set yourself a goal for every day and stick to it. Yeah, e eBay and other platforms all reward consistent effort. Um, as long as you, here's the way I like to look at it. It doesn't always work out this way, but the way I look at it is, on average, if you are buying and selling good quality in-demand items, whatever you want to sell per day, that's how much you should be listing per day. If you're part-time and you're just trying to make a little extra money for vacation or something like that, you're like, I want to sell one thing a day on eBay. Well, if you want to sell a thing a day on eBay, then on average, you should probably list how many things a day? One thing a day. Yes. And have time to ship one thing a day. Exactly. Well, yeah, you have to service everything yes. too. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to sell... 20 things a day on eBay, well, you should probably on average be listing about 20 things a day on eBay, at least. And you're always gonna have, we're all gonna have dud items, right? Like not everything is going to sell and some of it's gonna sit around a long time. So really, if your goal is to, to sell two things a day, you should probably be listing three, just to cut, cover a little bit of slack. But whatever it is you're doing, you've gotta do it consistently. It's gotta be non-negotiable. It's gotta be a part of your routine. If all you're doing is shopping and stacking up unlisted inventory, you're not making money. And I've done that before. You, you've seen me do that before. We've gotten way better at it. Yes, we, we try to, whenever we source on the weekend, we try to make sure we list everything we can. As much as we can. Yeah, sometimes it's just, it's just not possible. That means you had a great sourcing weekend but list as much as you can. We're always trying. If you don't have enough time in the week to list 50 items, then don't buy 50 items, you Un know? Unless it's just something, an offer you couldn't <laughs> refuse. We say that, but we all, as resellers, you always end up with, you hear people talking about their death piles. Most of them have it. They aren't great though. It's better to have things listed, right? Mm -hmm. So consistently listing is the lifeblood of an eBay business. Number nine, letting fear and suspicion drive your decisions. So what does that mean to you? Okay, so let me give y'all an example. Um, I've, I've probably sold, I've sold, I would, I'm gonna say at least 2,000 video games over the years, okay? One time I sold a video game to a customer and they got it, they claimed it didn't work, and they opened a return. That's fine. I don't test all the video games. This is a cartridge-based game. I think, it, I think it cost about $15, right? They opened a return. I get the package back, and it's empty. All it has is like some bubble wrap in it. They sent back an empty box, and it was all sealed. Nothing fell out, nobody opened it. They just sent back an empty box, 
and they tried to scam me and at first they got away with it because they had tracking showing the thing got back got delivered yeah, yeah. and so i had to fight with ebay and i did this as a matter of principle i also did it um i used it to make some e some youtube content uh it wasn't time well spent for 15 dollars. i'll admit that however a lot of people have and this these kinds of things do happen where people are trying to scam you mm -hmm. or or buy something like a, a halloween costume say right right around halloween and then a week after halloween they say it doesn't fit or it has a rip or it doesn't it is it has it, a stick stain on it <laughs> not as described or whatever right and you're like oh you rented my thing right, right. these kinds of issues happen selling online is risky yes it's very risky I, I would say probably once a month we have some weird thing come up having said that or like offering returns mm -hmm. right yeah. offering having no returns versus offering returns on ebay you think well if i offer returns on ebay everybody's, everybody's gonna return everybody's gonna return everything yeah. i can't afford that right reality very few return anything like our reality is like i've been doing this a while over 30,000 items way less than one percent of those 30,000 items got returned and i had returns turned on for most of them so that's not a realistic concern you know how many times that story that that stuck with me about that video game where they they did like a fraudulent return you know how many times that happened to me once that happened once uh we had we we've had we had a rental return not too a long vacuum ago cleaner that uses water right yeah. and yeah that happened the guy tried to scam us we kind of won we kind of lost i don't know yeah uh it was a big hassle how often does that happen not often no. so these like i would say the problem cases the problem children the problem items probably account for what candace about one percent yeah i mean it's gonna happen it's the cost of doing business don't let that fear drive you isn't it like one percent yeah i would say so so no. i mean e even if you're not experienced reseller i'm sure pretty much anyone can see the fallacy of letting something that happens one percent of the time drive your policy or how you operate for the other 99 percent you know like 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 just like you, you drive your car and once every 10 years you get in a wreck right i think we've all determined for the most part that's not often enough to stop driving exactly right so don't let fear make decisions for your business you know like if, if something doesn't happen very often then go with that assume the best things are going to happen because if you look if you're scared of every monster under the bed or in the closet in the resale game you'll never be able to do anything no because bad stuff does happen, but it's mostly good. Yeah. But 99 point something percent of packages we send out, we never hear about again. Yeah, you just gotta take your punches and roll with it. All right, I'm a little worried about this one, Candace, but go ahead and read it. All right, our 10th and final thing is not taking personal accountability for your results. Uh, that means if your business is not doing too well, don't finger point, do something about it. Yeah, don't look without, Don't don't look externally look internally because well, yeah. the external things like if you think that ebay is not showing your items the way they should be or if you think that people should appreciate the things this is good inventory they should be buying it well the fact that people aren't buying it should tell you that a they don't want it b they don't it's, need it. it's not priced right yeah c it's the wrong time of year mm -hmm. you know whatever one of those factors the the proof is in your sales yes and so look for ways that you can change your system your way of doing things to improve the things you source like nine times out of ten whenever somebody tells me they have very poor sales and if i ask them to you know let me see your store and yeah. i go look at their store 90 percent of the time it's the inventory i hate i hate to be mean not trying to be mean 90 percent of the time their inventory sucks yeah and that's just a fact 
Um, a lot of the stuff we have listed, mm -hmm. the, not all of our stuff is great, and I understand that. Nice. We have some inventory that is top notch, like really good. That Tchaikovsky thing I just showed you, mm -hmm. that's a $300 thing, yeah. and it's worth it, and it's gonna sell for that eventually. We also have, let me open a drawer up here. I have a Wii Fit Plus that's been listed for how long? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is this a good inventory? Am I surprised it didn't sell? Is this not, is it, the fact that I haven't made money off of this, whose fault is that? It's Who mine. It's for buying it. It's mine for buying it. It's mine for listing it. Yes. Right? Uh, there's plenty of stuff like that in mm -hmm. here, all over the place. Like, you have to own your results. And the reason I say that is because if you go online and you go into a Facebook group and you say, are sales slow for anybody else? Guess what? You're going to have people agree and disagree. No, you're going to have mostly people agree. Yeah. Because there's always people that have bad sales and they're going to tell you all the reasons. They're going to say the economy, the algorithm, the this and that, the that and this. And you know what? You're going to take some solace in that. You're going to say, oh. So it's not just me. It's not my fault. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? If you come up to the conclusion that it's not your fault, then you're not going to change. You're not going to do the things that are necessary to improve your results. So the, the safest course of action, in my opinion, is to always assume it's your fault. Yeah. And always assume that you can do something to make it better because you usually can. Nine times out of 10 on eBay, it just means buy better stuff. Mm -hmm. Figure out better stuff if to buy. If you have good stuff, it's going to sell. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's the bottom line. Yeah. The good stuff always sells. Yep. So, yeah. But take personal accountability for your results. Because in the end, nobody, nobody else really cares about your results. Except for you. Nobody else is doing the work. You, know? you, don't, you don't have a manager standing over you saying, you need to list more. Or you need to you list... You need to take better pictures. Right. You need yeah. to list this kind of stuff. It's up to you. This is your business. It's up to you to make sure it succeeds. So if, if, if you're not selling what you, want, what you want to sell per month or per day or whatever, that's your fault. That's on you. What are you going to do to make it better? Because if you blame somebody else, things are going to stay the same. And what did that accomplish? Even if it is somebody else's fault. That's the game. Figure out how to play it and do what you can to change things. All right, we hope you enjoyed our top 10. If you're a reseller and you think we got some of these wrong or there's something else you would add, please put it down below so people can read them. Uh, we all have different kinds of experience. Also, um, down below there's a link to a Facebook group. If you're a new reseller and you have questions about any of the items that we talked about here, Go, click do yourself a favor click down below free facebook group we don't make any money off of it we just run it yep. and ask your in-depth questions about what to buy how to pack every all the things we talked about in this video you'll get a wide range of answers from that facebook group that is linked down below so do yourself a favor if you're new that's one of the better ways to get this information, I think. Yep. So thanks a bunch for watching and we will see y'all again very soon. Bye y'all. Bye.